Look, they're all pointing. The Atlantic, maybe the Pacific. Yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there, see him? He's laying down, see him? Yeah, he's laying down. And still I'm here with you fighting like hell to get a center. What's happening? And to make sure we take back the white because if we do, we're gonna make America better than ever before. We're gonna make it. Yeah, look. And it's not easy. Because we have millions and millions of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have criminals. We have people that should not be here. And it's much tougher than if it happened. You went right on the roof again. In recorded history, what you're witnessing is how long it took in real time for Secret Service to respond to eyewitness accounts of a gunman within 400 feet of President Trump. It was all part of what some are calling an apocalyptic failure on the part of the Secret Service. And we're going to see the latest on the serious questions that have yet to be answered for what happened on that fateful day. And then David Spun tracking it in Washington, D.C. And David, I'll allow you to deliver this major headline. Judge Eileen Cannon has dismissed the classified documents case against Donald Trump in Florida. This is massive news. We did not see this coming at all. It just keeps getting better and better, gang. The classified documents case against President Trump has officially been tossed. We've got the latest on that and what is clearly a tide-turning moment in American history. Greetings, everyone. It's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you stay sane in these insane times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, don't forget, we've got our Call to Arms event, our very own free online event this Wednesday, July 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's a completely free event that will show you your own crucial role that only you can play in securing Trump's victory in November. We've already had over a thousand of you RSVP. And if you click on that link below right now to secure your spot, we're going to send you your very own Courageous Conservatives book bundle absolutely free as a thank you for taking your part in securing Trump's victory in November. Seriously. So don't wait. Click on that link below to register today. The tide is turning, gang. The tide is indeed turning. We just got breaking news that Jack Smith's classified documents case against President Trump, the very case that involved that unprecedented raid on Mar-a-Lago, has officially been dismissed. Judge Eileen Cannon, who's been wonderful throughout this entire process, has ruled that Trump's motion to dismiss the indictment based on the unlawful appointment and funding of Smith is officially granted. The grounds of the dismissal was that this judge believed that Jack Smith's appointment was indeed unconstitutional. In a 93-page opinion, Judge Cannon wrote, quote, Upon careful study of the foundational challenges raised in the motion, the court is convinced that Special Counsel Smith's prosecution of this action breaches two structural cornerstones of our constitutional scheme— the role of Congress in the appointment of constitutional officers and the role of Congress in authorizing expenditures by law. In layman's terms, Attorney General Merrick Garland unlawfully appointed Smith without Smith first being confirmed by the Senate for his prosecutorial position and Congress did not appropriate funds for Smith's investigation as required by law. In other words, the Biden administration basically tried to do a shortcut here, bypassing what they saw would be hurdles in Congress and the illegalities of that shortcut caught up with them. So the case has officially been tossed out as of today. Praise be to God. Obviously, Judge Cannon saw what happened over the weekend and just said enough in it. Enough. I mean, I'm sure she made the decision. Obviously, she made the decision before that with a 93 page uh, opinion, but she just finally said enough. I think she announced this decision within hours of the assassination attempt because she has had it with the games that are being played, these weaponized lawfare games that have gone on long enough.
she's had it. So chalk up another win, another astounding win for soon to be number 47. Now, We've got to talk about the other major dimension to what happened on Saturday. Uh, in our first video, make sure you check that one out if you haven't already uh, checked it out. We talked about the miracle, the real miracle that saved President Trump's life. You definitely want to see that video. To me, of course, that's the single most important dimension to all of this. The fact that we all witnessed a bona fide divine miracle on Saturday. That's first and foremost. But a very close second is, of course, the utter disaster that was the Secret Service. Again, there's so much here. We're talking failures, horrific. Some are arguing seemingly purposeful failures at the top, particularly with the director of the Secret Service, and, of course, apocalyptic failures on the ground. Let's start with all the questions that are surrounding what happened on the ground. How on earth did Secret Service, as well as local police enforcement, allow the perpetrator to walk around these open fairgrounds with a long rifle, an AR-15, in his arms? How did, they, how did someone walking around with an AR-15 do so completely undetected? Just that question alone is enough to get virtually everyone involved on Saturday fired. How on earth did that happen? But of course, that's just where the questions start. How on earth was he allowed access to that building just 150 yards, about 400 feet from where Trump was standing, and not only access it, but, but, but actually get on the rooftop, which, by the way, required him to bring and set up a freaking giant ladder. Here's another question. The rally wasn't announced until just a few days before it happened. It was actually announced on July the 10th, literally three days before it happened. Gang, how on earth is that enough time for this would-be assassin to case the location of the Butler Farm Show complex? Jim Garrity of National Review is asking this very question. How is three days enough to have planned this out? And why on earth did it take law enforcement so long to respond to the concerns of the eyewitnesses alerting them to this guy on the roof? And we saw this at the very beginning of the video. It took Secret Service a full two freaking minutes to respond to a man on a roof with a long rifle in a sniper position. It, simp it makes no sense. You could think about this forever. And it will not make any sense. Or, or better, there are only two possible scenarios. Either this was coordinated or it was apocalyptic incompetence. I, 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 there's no other way of putting it. And many major commentators are now coming out and saying that explicitly. Now, before we get into this, with all of this uncertainty, all of this insanity surrounding us and the world all over, there's never been a better time to secure your finances with the timeless value of gold and silver. And gang, that's why we have as one of our wonderful friends and sponsors, the amazing company Gold Code. They are patriots just like us who want to help you and guide you in how to get into precious metals completely tax-free and penalty-free. In fact, if you click on that link below right now, you can get your very own absolutely free gold and silver kit. It's an amazing free resource that shows you step-by-step step how to get into precious metals, even if your money's still in a retirement account like an IRA or a 401k. And again, gang, just to show you how awesome the Patriots over at Gold Co. are, the best part is that you may actually already qualify to get up to $10,000 in free silver. I told you, gang, they're the best. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the action by clicking on the link below or going to turleytalkslikesgold.com and get your own free gold and silver kit today. It promises to be a real life changer. Here's the assessment of former CIA analyst Larry Johnson. The Secret Service agent who was in charge of setting up security for that venue failed to do their job or they were complicit in allowing this assassination attempt to, to occur. There's no, there no other choice. And let me explain. When you go out and do the pre-site survey as a Secret Service uh, agent, 
you go around, you put somebody at the podium where Donald Trump is going to stand. And then you move around both inside the venue and then outside the venue to find out where are the potential lines of fire. Once you identify those potential lines of fire, you are then supposed to post armed security personnel there with counter snipers. They didn't do that. And in fact, there are reports, credible reports, from bystanders that they warned police that they saw this guy climbing up on the roof and no one did anything. So the Secret Service agents that were inside the venue, they did their job. They moved immediately once the shot started uh, to protect Donald Trump. But the overall officer in charge, and I don't know who that is, but they failed in their job. And it's either incompetence or they were complicit in a plot to have Donald Trump killed. There's no no other way to look at it. They were either incompetent or complicit. There's there's no other option. They were either incompetent or they were complicit. Beautifully summarized. Here's Dan Bongino, himself a former Secret Service agent, on what he is calling an apocalyptic security failure on the part of the Secret Service. I'm, I'm getting from a number of sources that people are feeding to me their information, obviously, because they want to fix it. They're concerned, and I think you're going to see a lot of whistleblowers. I'm hearing there were very, very few, I don't want to give an exact number, but very few actual, I don't think anyone else has reported this, actual Secret Service post standers at that site. That they were temp HSI, right. uh, Homeland Security folks, which are, they're great folks. I'm not knocking them, but that's not what they do specifically. We do protection and we're trained for that. So I'm hearing that. I'm also hearing that the counter uh, the counter sniper team that they had a problem seeing over the elevation. That's why I didn't engage right away. Oh come on! But but that's not the problem. The problem, well, it's the problem, but that's not the real. The problem is, where the hell was the aerial visual support? Why was there no helicopter? Why was there no drone? Why was there no FLIR? Why was there no thermal forward looking infrared? How the hell is the crowd acting as the freaking counter surveillance? Operation? I know if that's the best asset you have is random Trump supporters telling police that there's a guy with a gun. What technology are they deploying? They're bragging about they have all this new technology. I didn't see it. Um, so that will give you the sense of how something was obvious, abysmally not right about the security detail on Saturday. This, this wasn't just a matter of poor execution. This was gross negligence on an apocalyptic scale. Now, I hate to say this. I do not mean to be coy. But one possible key to all of this is, yes, DEI. Again, I am not trying to be flippant here. A lot is being made of the female Secret Service agent who demonstrably had a hard time holstering her gun. Granted, things were chaotic, absolutely, but unfortunately, it seemed to be a bit par for the course of the female security contingent who frankly didn't seem to really know what was going on and what they were doing. Now, all this seems to go back to the director of the Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle, who just months ago boasted about the Secret Service's DEI initiatives. To expand hiring, they're aiming to have 30% women recruits by 2030 and even allowed YouTube influencer Michelle Carey to train with agents. But I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates and ensure that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce, um, and particularly women. So there you have it. More grotesque rhetoric coming from the director of the Secret Service who places a value not on competence or qualification or conscientiousness. No, we at the Secret Service are dedicated. We are dedicated dedicated to diversity and they say we belong to a cult here again is dan bongino on the role of dei in the secret service i want everyone at home go on your phone or computer now and i want you to look up u.s secret service red ties donald trump yeah read it the secret service was more concerned about protective agents around donald trump if you think i'm making this up Go to your go to a left wing search engine if you think I'm biased. Go to go to Scroogle and put it. Oh, you're reading a story right now. 
They were more concerned about the color of the Secret Service agents' ties around Donald Trump, given the perception that a red tie was somehow support. I've got red ties. I'm a Republican. It has nothing to do with it. I just like red ties. They go nice with white shirts. That was, that's an actual story. Oh, you see? You see it right now. I'm not crazy. This is what the Secret Service was concerned about. They put out, a, you know, a thousand tweets about all of this DEI stuff. Do I know that's related here? I, I don't. I'm just saying, like, there are, you have one job and only one job. Your job is keep the body alive no matter what. Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Jill Biden, the president of Djibouti, it doesn't matter. That is your job. They absolutely, resolutely, 100% failed. Not a single excuse should be made. Not a single excuse should be attempted. This should be the subject of congressional hearings and investigations, because if they can't do this, and this is the best technology you had, then, folks, th th there's no purpose anymore. At the very least, we can say that what happened on J-13 was clearly deliberate to the extent that DEI deliberately destroys. DEI, it doesn't build anything. It doesn't create. It doesn't awaken. It doesn't aspire or inspire. It, destroy, it destroys what a much better civilization built, and Donald Trump was almost killed because of it. This is precisely what Scott Adams observed. Quote, everyone saying the assassination attempt must be an inside job doesn't understand the power of DEI. Now, that said, the negligence here was so utterly grotesque that it obviously invites precisely that kind of speculation. It obviously invites the speculation that this was an inside job. Of course it would. Which means that all of Bumbling Biden's assurances that the FBI is in, it's investigating, we'll get to the bottom of what's happening, they're all totally foolhardy to the extent that he thinks that this is going to assuage people's questions or concerns. Once again, the adults in D.C. are running into the very brick wall of the very delegitimation that their incompetence has built. Senator Josh Hawley uh, from, uh, from Missouri, uh, he's formally demanding a congressional investigation conducted by the Senate Homeland Security Committee into all of this. We'll see what comes of that. But regardless, as of now, serious questions about what really happened on Saturday don't just remain. Given that they were either incompetent or complicit, those questions are just beginning.